Hello YouTube, it's Barbara Jean. This is not going to be a very long video, I assure you. <laughs> I just wanted to come on and um, I tell you something that I saw today. We've had a, we've been having a very mild winter here in Vancouver, which is really a blessing <laughs> because we um, Vancouver is full of hills and hills and mountains, and so whenever you can avoid um, cold, wet and cold together and black ice and all that. Uh, freezing the roads. It's always a boon. Anyway, it's been very mild, so we've been very blessed. Uh, but anyway, you never guess what I saw today. I was taking my dog out for a walk. This is not even a half an hour ago. And uh, and this is we're getting ready to leave. There was this interesting, well, we've had some, a little bit of drizzle, a little rain, and uh, I was looking over in, in the direction about a mile away. There was this beautiful rainbow. Beautiful rainbow. Can you believe it? I was so excited um, because I've been talking about the rainbow. God always gives me a sign. This beautiful, gorgeous rainbow. And so when I got home, I got the dog in the car and drove home from the park and and just got out of the car and there was the rainbow not too far from my house. Beautiful, big, gorgeous rainbow. And I was so excited to see it. So anyway, it inspired me to come on and, and talk a little bit more today. Um, I wanted to just um, talk a little bit about that something that's going on, uh, I'm going to take this ring off, it's a very inexpensive cheap ring, but it looks pretty, isn't it pretty? <laughs> $10 ring, but, but it's pretty, but anyway, I'm just taking it off because it's irritating my hand, but anyway, um, uh, I, I, I was thinking about how this, um, we're having this blue blood, super blue blood wolf moon, <laughs> and I'm thinking, I wasn't even thinking about the fact that it's a blue blood blue and red moon super moon extremely rare uh super blue blood wolf moon uh, coming up in a couple of days and so i'm thinking it's, it's strange because i wasn't thinking blue and red in the term of terms of the of the moon really i wasn't really thinking about it but all of a sudden i was in the last couple of weeks i've been thinking a lot about blue and red as you know my videos i've been talking about blue and red and scarlet or blue red and purple and then lo and behold the other day when i made a video I was looking at pomegranates and what should I find that the garments of the high priest is wears a garment wears robes that are that are embroidered with red and blue and scarlet pomegranates I'm like I didn't know that but it's like the Lord keeps giving me confirmation that I'm on the right track so anyway I just wanted to read a little bit uh, just about the high priest and uh, talk about the temple a little tiny bit. Um, this is Exodus 39, 1. And of the blue and purple and scarlet, they made clothes of service to do service in the holy place and made the holy garments for Aaron as the Lord commanded Moses. Anyway, that's one place where it talks about these uh, scarlet pomegranates. Oh, Exodus 39, 24. And they made upon the hems of the robe pomegranates of blue and purple and scarlet and twined and twined linen now i just wanted to read a couple of verses about how jesus is our high priest um for second corinthians 6 14 be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness and what communion hath light with darkness um and what concord hath christ with baal or what part has hath he that believeth with an infidel um so this is a really strong word that we really need to be conscious of separating ourselves from unbelievers and it's certainly in in the area of marriage um we are married to christ and so therefore um there has to be some separation of some sort this is what it's saying here okay and what agreement hath the temple of god with idols for you are the temple of the living god you are the temple of the living god as God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, says the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. And will be with the Father, and will be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. And all things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. And all things are lawful for me, 
but I will not be brought under the power of any. And we know that a lot of people we're seeing in real time, because it, the, the sense of the world of being shouted from the rooftop, if you will, and just think about it, the internet is like shouting from the rooftop. Everybody's got this information now. That there is their sin is that when they're when you're under the power of sin, it has power over you. You think that you have power over your sin, but no, no. It, it, your sin has power over you. And you're, you're seeing this in real time of people in high places who've been caught in this trap and, and have been uh, manipulated and controlled by their sin. And because of their sinful actions, other people have control over them. And this is what we're seeing. Okay, this is what it says. So the all, the, all things are lawful, not all things are expedient. Meat for the belly and belly for meats, but God shall destroy both, shall destroy both, both it and them. Now the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God hath both raised up the Lord, and will also raise us up by his own power. Know ye not that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of a harlot? God, God forbid. What? Know ye not that, that he which is joined to a harlot is one body? For two, saith he, shall be one flesh. Um, this is a strong uh, a strong word against fornication and what, I mean, like joining yourself with, uh, with uh, unbelievers and being unequally yoked. This is what it's talking about. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that commit fornication sinneth against his own body. What? Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit which is in you, which you have of God? and you are not your own. For you have been bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Uh, Revelations 3.11 Behold, I come quickly, hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Him that overcometh will I make the pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out. And I'll write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I'll write upon him my new name. Hebrews 3, 1. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus, who was faithful to him that appointed him, as also Moses was faithful in all his house. For this man was counted worthy of more glory than Moses, insomuch as he who hath built the house hath more honor than the house. For every house is built by some man, but he that buildeth all things is God. Hebrews 5, 4 And no man taketh his, this honor unto himself, but he that is called God, as was Aaron, so also Christ glorified not himself to be made an high priest, that he that hath said unto them, him, Thou art my son, today have I begotten thee. And he saith also to in another place, Thou art a high priest for ever after the order of Melchizedek, who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong, strong, with strong crying and tears, unto him that was able to save him from death, and was heard in that he was in that he feared, though he were a son, he learned he, yet he learned he obedience by the things he suffered, and being made perfect, he made. He became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obeyed him, obey him, called of God and high priest after the order of Melchizedek. So Jesus Christ um, was obedient to the Father. He learned obedience by coming to this earth, by being, uh, by by giving his life for us all, and then God called him the high priest after the order of Melchizedek. So Jesus Christ is our high priest, and he's the one who's wearing those beautiful robes of pomegranates around the hem of scarlet, blue, and purple. So that's amazing. But and I want to just tell you something that's been going on, and I guess one of the reasons why I'm bringing all this up is that, um, it says something about Colossians 5, 22. Uh, hmm. I don't know what that means. Anyway, I just guess it's, let's go back to what I was going to say. Like I said, it's going to be a short video because I'm almost done. But uh, in the last three, I guess about three weeks now, I've been telling you about this brain. So I've been telling you about this brain surgery that I've been having for years now. It's it's an ongoing, perpetual 
sensation on my head that I can't supernatural experience that I'm going through. Uh, but anyway, um, in the last about the last three weeks, I mean, not only did I have this strange soreness on my nose, which is almost gone, thankfully, uh, which, were, like I said, related to the heart and God was setting his people free from the spirit of Jezebel. And I had that, that, that dream, that vision it was a, vi a vision and an, um, a sensation of something hitting me here in the thyroid. Um, so like in the last couple of weeks, last several weeks, it's been extremely intense for me. Um, this, the surgery thing going on and what I've been going through. But anyway, uh, getting back to what I was saying, in the last, about the last three weeks, in addition to all that other stuff that's been going on, um, I've been having um, very odd sensations, which I haven't had before. These, the When the Lord does this brain surgery, what I call brain surgery, it changes from time to time. Sometimes it, uh, when it first started, it felt like God was first pouring oil on my head. That went on for about two years, the sensation of oil being continually poured on my head. And then next time it changed, it started to feel like cutting and someone taking a little hair here and connecting it over there and connecting it over there, connecting it like, like super fine surgery. And sometimes it felt like someone was cutting right into my scalp and, and doing something over here and digging in there and digging in there or, or removing something or someone putting a syringe in my head and pushing some, something into my head. It, it, really strange. I can't explain it. Just the sensation keeps changing and altering. Sometimes it felt like someone cutting or um, someone scraping. That went on forever. That that scraping one was extremely painful and extremely irritating. Um, that was about the spirit of lust, by the way. That's that was that was the Lord scraping and scraping and scraping. And that's when I had that dream about um, being baptized by the Holy Spirit when she said we had a problem. And it was the spirit of lust. And she was scraped. Someone, I had this sensation of this constant scraping on the top of my head. It was absolutely <laughs> painful and irritating. Extremely. But anyway, um, that took that took about three months. That was horrible. It was horrible. But anyway, um, this new sensation I've never had before is taking, it, it's this very odd feeling around this part of my head particularly in the ears. And what is this part um, I've been telling you? Well, Chris, you should, you should know this is your temple. This is your temple, of course. This is what it's called. And this is where the sensation seems to be located, right around in this area. And particularly on my right ear, um, there's this very funny, buzzy feeling all around in this area. Uh, mostly on my right side, though. So, um, I'm going to take this as an indication that the Lord is cleansing the temple, um, that he's working on the temple. He's working on cleansing the temple, um, that this is the stage that we're in the, for the church, for the readiness of the church to be raptured, to be uh, equally yoked. And I can tell you that I'm telling you the Lord is uh, cleansing his bride to equally make her equally yoked with him. Um, Jesus cannot be unequally yoked. Just like it says here that we are not supposed to be unequally yoked with sinners um, and unbelievers and uh, fornicators and harlots and all that. Uh, we are also cannot be unequally yoked with Christ. Christ cannot be unequally yoked. Otherwise, that would be going against his, who he is. He's God. He can only marry perfection. And it says that he, the bride will be without spot or wrinkle. And so I'm telling you right now, this is what I've been feeling in this, this area right in here, and particularly around the ears, which is really strange. And it, well, the ear is very close to the temple, is it not? And perhaps it's a sign that God is cleansing um, what we hear. Perhaps the mainstream media is going to have a cleansing from all the lies and corruptions and deceptions. It's propaganda, propaganda, the propaganda, Pop, 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 pop. <laughs> the words are just not coming to me. Propaganda that they have been um, using to spread lies and deceptions. They're not telling the truth anymore. They don't tell the people the truth. And they think it's okay. Perhaps it's a sign that the Lord is is going to cleanse what we are, we hear or that the mainstream media is going to get a wake-up call um, and start being cleansed. Or 
because they're you think about mainstream media in government is abs or the media is extremely important to get news out to the people. You got you can only keep the people free if they hear the they hear the truth. But you start telling them lies, well of course they get puts them in the bondage and gives them all kinds of well misinformation. It's just not correct. So perhaps that's what that's about. But I do know it, like I said, it's about, about the temple. It's about cleansing the temple. It's about something here because I, about the last three weeks I've been getting this very strange sensation right in this area. Really fluttery kind of tingly feelings that I've never had before. Um, and of all the sensations I've had, I've had so many and I can I've, I've been trying to describe to you in numerous different things that I've gone on on top of my head. But anyway, I just wanted to uh, put that out there for you and and um, just I was like so excited when I saw them, that rainbow, beautiful, beautiful rainbow on a winter day that feels more like spring and to see that beautiful rainbow in the sky was just like, thank you God for that wonderful confirmation, yay! So I thought I'd just come on and tell you that and uh, hope that you have a good day and uh, just to uh, just, just celebrate. I mean, just think we're having a, 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 a super blue blood red moon. A uh, blue blood wolf moon. Super blue blood wolf moon. Is that it? <laughs> but it's red and it's blue. And it's super. <laughs> God bless. I'll talk to you later.